Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about if you want to get a job, do this. Now, I know it's a clickbait title. I can't help it. But honestly, there is some truth behind this. In fact, it's all truth. So the key behind this video and really the key behind getting a, a programming job, I think right now, even though I didn't have this opportunity when I was first getting started, GitHub was a brand new thing. It was just getting a uh, capital injection from some of the biggest Silicon Valley and funders but that was not around when I was first getting started. In fact, Stack Overflow wasn't even really a thing when I was first getting started. So granted, this is easier said than done, like most things in life. But really what you need to do is you need to go out there on GitHub and you need to start contributing to open source projects. But how do you do that? How does somebody just go in and do that? For somebody to say that that's what you should do and then not give any sort of like example on like, what you need to do in order to do that, you're kind of fucked. Guys, it's 2019 though. 2019 and GitHub is out there. GitHub has tons of projects out there that you can easily contribute to. But getting started with that requires one simple rule. And that is something I want to show you guys in this video is that the simple rule in order to actually contribute to an op open source project. Because if you don't know how to do that, then you're not just going to be able to jump in and say, hey, you should change this or that. Nobody's going to listen to you. What you have to do is you have to replicate the project. You have to replicate the build. You have to actually replicate the environment in which the creators are actually creating these projects. That is the key. So how do you do that? You do that by, you first have to have Git. You have to have Git installed on your computer. I don't give a fuck if it's on Linux, Mac, or Windows, you gotta have it installed. All right, so after you have that installed though, the next thing you need is you need some sort of passion for a project. There has to be an open source project out there that you guys are impressed with, something you guys want to actually do for yourselves. That is the key. You gotta find that passion and then contribute to it. So you figured out what your passion is, what you wanna contribute to, the next thing you need to ask yourself is how do I replicate the build environment from which these people are working? So the good news is for you guys is that the code is available on GitHub. It's all there for you. Whereas when I was first getting started, there was Google groups. And if you guys have ever messed with Google groups, you know that it's a nightmare. There's just like these weird thread forums, great information in Google groups, but it's not the way to actually contribute code in a community effort. So this entire 3JS library, the code, everything, all these examples, everything is in the code within GitHub. You want to do some 3D graphics, then this is a great place to start right now in the browser. Okay, so in order to contribute to this project, number one, if you look at the source code, you're going to see a package.json. So anybody that has done any sort of JavaScript development, any sort of new modern JavaScript development, you know about package.json. It lists all of your dependencies. It lists all of the developer dependencies. And it also has all the scripts in or that you need in order to actually run the project. Look at all these scripts here that he's defined that you can easily clone and then just run these scripts. And it's going to do the development build, the production build, He's using roll up here. Like all this stuff is just, it's all so, it's obvious once you start working in projects like this, but unless you know how to replicate the build environment and know what this crap is doing, there's no way that you can contribute to an open source project. But once you understand the build environment, then, you know, balls to the wall definitely contribute because you're going to know exactly how to replicate the exact development environment get debugging help and all kinds of other stuff that the actual developer is using, the creator of this project, you can actually do the same thing. So the people that you, you look at and you think, oh, wow, how do they know how to do that and blah, 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 this and that, they know how to build the project in the exact same way that the, that the actual creator has, has built the project. Now, granted, this process is different for every single code stack that you're gonna use. So if you're gonna be dealing with .NET, or Java or something else that it's, it's all going to be relatively similar. However, the, the tools that are being used and these command line arguments that are going on, like if we look at dev right here, if I want to say, or let's look at start. If I say NPM run start, I know because NPM is, is running this project, I can use NPM run start to use Node.js to run his development build right here. But what is this thing doing? It's saying run dev. Here's dev. So now it's, it's bringing in some concurrently uh, library. And then it's adding a bunch of command line arguments to do all this bullshit, whatever this is doing. And, but the, the bottom line though, is that like, it, it's, it's not, it's not this crazy science that you don't understand. It's something that you do understand if you know how to build a similar project. 
So as an example, let me go ahead and see what I can do right now with this project. I'm gonna go at, like with 3JS, I'm gonna say clone, download, blah, 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 get my GitHub clone. And I can go to a directory. I'll just open this up. Who cares? Uh, I'll go to my projects directory. And in here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory for, let's just call it three, whatever. And we'll CD into that. And then we're gonna do a git clone and paste in the clone for that git repository. All right, so we got this joker downloaded. We cloned it from git. And if I go ahead and just, I'm gonna do a dir on this mug. See what we got. We got 3JS in here. So I'm gonna CD into that 3.js. I'm gonna look, oh shit, there's a ton of files in here. So it's better that I go ahead and take my Visual Studio editor and I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna open that folder. Open, I'm gonna open what I just cloned right now. So I use a free, uh, free tool, Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna select 3, 3.js, and I'm gonna say select folder. And I'll open this up so I can actually view the code a little bit easier. Oh, look, there's all the examples. Everything we were just looking at is right in here. All his code is right in here. Everything he's doing on every one of those examples, and there's like 50 of them on the page that we were just looking at, it's all right here. But more importantly, if we go down to this package.json, since I know this is a uh, JavaScript project and I know he's using Node in order to build it, I can go down here to the package.json and I can see, oh, look at all these, uh, look at all these dependencies he's got. He has these developer dependencies. These are all needed in order for you to even debug this project. So if you don't install this shit, you cannot possibly debug this project. You can't. You simply can't. You're going to be pissing in the wind. But when you know JavaScript and you know the ecosystem, you know, hey, it's as simple as saying right click. Uh, not open Explorer, but right click open in terminal. And I'm just going to say NPM install. That's all I got to do. It's going to install everything I need for this project. All right, guys, so it's downloaded. It's, it's uh, NPM installed. You, you clone the project, you installed all the dependencies, and now it's just simply a matter of running the project. So how do you do that? If you want to do it like Mr. Doob, npm run dev, that's all he does. Boom, right there. Look, he just fired it up right there. Control click, open link. Not working. So here he's using a dependency called rollup. Rollup is a commonly used thing. It's also used in conjunction with Webpack. Sometimes projects use both Webpack and rollup. In this case, he likes to use rollup. But look at what dev is actually doing. Dev is saying concurrently, what is what is start doing? Oh, start is just running dev. So if I were to just simply say, you know what? I don't want to do any sort of uh, other command. After I build it, I want to say npm run start. And you could actually play with all these different build environments. Like he has a linting tool, all this stuff. A lot of it is actually running concurrently. So one of these scripts is calling another script and blah, blah, blah. All the Node NPM projects are doing this stuff. If you look at React or Angular, they're all doing something similar. All right, guys, so both build and dev does not work, even though it works on my Mac, but it does not work on the goddamn Windows because Windows is probably a piece of shit. But to be honest with you, like this kind of shows you the type of bullshit you have to deal with when you're talking about dependencies. In order to solve this problem, because it's not about the dev or the build, this fucking thing doesn't work because of HTTP server. And you can see the version that he's referencing in here um, is not like, so it's a, it's a newer version. It don't work. So for Windows users, because uh, Windows sucks, we have to downgrade to an earlier version. So if we go ahead and run it now, it's going to work. This is the type of bullcrap though, that you're only going to know by dealing with the build environment. But either way, let's just uh, move on here. This is the exact running website now. You're running it locally. You can debug it locally. So you can actually stop and put breakpoints on his Node.js code. All this stuff is now working locally. I think the moral of this story is that most real developers don't use Windows because Windows fucking sucks, dude.